Okay, at this time, I ask that everyone please turn all electronic devices to vibrate. Madam Majority Leader. Hello? Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of September 16th, 2020. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would I'm like sorry. to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Can we pause for a moment? Yes. Yeah. Uh, this is Jeff Baker. We temporarily lost our parliamentarian. If you just hold on for one second, I will temporarily take over until he is able to get back on. Okay. Uh, if you could resume, Lori. Would you like for me to begin again, or would you like to continue with roll call? If you, you could begin at the if you could start again. Good afternoon and welcome to the stated meeting of September 16th, 2020. I am Majority Leader Lori Cumbo and it is my pleasure to welcome you to this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Present. Ayala. Barron. Left, unbought, and present. Borelli. Present, thank you. Brannon. I'm here. Thank you. Cabrera. Present. Chin. Present. Cohen. Log done. Constantinides. Carnegie. Arki. Deutsch. I'm here. Diaz. Present. Drum. Present. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Good afternoon, everyone. I am here. Jonai. Present. Gredenchik. Present. <laughs> Holden. Here. Kalos. Virtual. King. Who? Present. 
Kozlowitz. Present. Lensman. Present. Lander. Here. Levin. Present. Levine. Present. Lewis. Present. Myself. Menchaca. Presente. Miller. This is not a vote. Throw a vote. Myself. It's going to be here. Not yet. Mm. Moya. Present. Perkins. Present. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Present. Richards. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. <clears throat> Torres. Present. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. I am present. Alone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. Thank you. I'm having a moment of technical difficulty. I will be with you yeah, in one moment. I think that was on Maisel and then Miss Me. We will now have our invocation, which will be done today by our, our esteemed rabbi, Rabbi Potasnik. Thank you. Firstly, I want to say that uh, Cardinal O'Connor years ago told me that the difference between Jews and Catholics is the following. Catholics leave and don't say goodbye. Jews say goodbye and don't leave. And I think all of us recognize that we are both Jewish and Catholic Christian. We're not going to say goodbye to this city, and we're certainly not going to leave this city. The prayer begins, God of all faiths, let us remember a city council chamber in the Midwest that has no electricity. If you want illumination, you have to bring a lantern to brighten the area in which you stand. We live today at a time where we see too many darkened places in our city because of COVID, crime and conflict. This is a time for all of us to bring our lanterns of leadership into the public arena. Doctors speak of PTSD, which impairs the ability to perform properly, but we have also seen examples of PTSG, post-traumatic stress growth, where courageous people confront the challenges of the day. Some step back and do little, while others step forward and do so much to better our world. May we remember a religious law, which teaches us that if you lose a possession and you give up hope of finding it, it belongs to the finder. But if you do not lose hope, it still belongs to you. We will not lose hope in a city that belongs to all of us. No one can locate the exact location of Mount Sinai, but everybody knows where Mount Moriah is situated in Jerusalem because the whole, that is the holy site where the temple was built. God, what we remember is what we build together. 
with the light of our lanterns and our love and loyalty to our city and to one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Rabbi Joseph Potasnik. We appreciate your words and your presence here today. Rabbi Potasnik is the Executive Vice President of the New York Pres of the New York Board of Rabbis, which is located at 4557 Bone Street in Flushing, Queens. We will now have Speaker Corey Johnson to spread the invocation on the record. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. <clears throat> uh, Rabbi Potasnik is a friend, a personal friend, and he is a great New Yorker. He is a wonderful, wonderful uh, leader in this city who is like Zelig sometimes. I show up somewhere and Rabbi Potasnik is over my shoulder and I'm always happy to see him because he always has healing words. He always has words that make people smile and laugh even in painful and difficult times. And he is someone who brings communities together. So I am really grateful that he is here to spread, that he is here to give the invocation. I saw him almost a week ago at uh, Ground Zero for the September 11th uh, ceremony, uh, and he was making uh, Vice President Biden laugh uh, in his conversation with him. So I'm really grateful to, uh, to Joe, to Rabbi Potasnik for everything he has done for decades in the city as a force for good. And we are grateful to have someone like him helping lead the way, especially in these dark times. So with that, Madam Majority Leader, I ask that the invocation be spread full and upon the record. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. And I know this was a big honor for you today. I now move that the at this time, we will now have the adoption of the minutes. I move that the minutes of the stated meetings of August 27, 2020 be adopted as printed. Thank you. Messages and papers from the mayor? None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices? None. Petitions and communications? None. Land use call-ups? M251. Uh, thank you. At this time, I'm asking for uh, uh, the clerk to take a roll call vote on today's land use call-up. This is just a vote on the one item on the land use call-up calendar. Adams. Aye. Ampri Samuel. I vote aye. Ayala. Aye. Barron. <laughs> Councilmember Barron, I'm, I'm, excuse me. I vote aye. Can you thank hear me? You. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Borelli. Aye, thank you. Brennan. Aye. Cabrera. Aye. Chin. Aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Carnegie. Aye. Deutsch. Aye. Diaz. Aye. Drum. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Jonai. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. I vote aye. Kalos. Aye. King. Aye. Ku. Aye. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lanceman. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. I vote aye, and I also just want to acknowledge um, Rabbi Potasnik um, for uh, the great work that he does throughout New York City and to thank him for all that uh, he has done personally for me and just uh, acknowledge that he brings the most um, important 
uh, or at least it's the most important uh, human emotion, which is joy and laughter. And uh, and I want to thank him for all that he does. And I put eye on all Angie's calls. Levine. Well, I second the comments of Council Member Levin, and I vote aye. Lewis. Aye. Mizello. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Aye. Richards. Rivera. Aye. Rose. Aye. Rosenthal. Aye. Did you hear me? Yeah. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Council member Torres. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. I vote aye. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. Matteo. Aye. Combo. I vote aye. Torres. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land use call-ups have 46 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. Thank you. Today's land use call-up is adopted. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon, everyone, and happy Wednesday. I hope you and your families are safe and well. Today marks a big milestone for our city as classes resume for our 1.1 million public school students. I wanna wish all the families and students, as well as teachers, principals, and school staff, a safe and healthy school year. I know that this year will be, of course, different than any we've ever seen, and there is a lot of nervousness. The council's committed to helping our educators and families through this difficult time. I really wanna thank uh, our education chair, Mark Traeger for his tremendous and thoughtful leadership in putting forward a plan that I think was actually a better plan uh, than we saw from the city uh, and uh, all of his tenacity and leadership in advocating for teachers and students and families. So thank you, Mark. Last Friday, as I mentioned earlier, I joined New Yorkers to commemorate the anniversary of September 11th. And that day is still an incredibly painful day, not just for our city, but our nation. But this anniversary reminded me of how resilient New Yorkers uh, truly are. As we continue to battle COVID-19 and look to keep reopening our city safely, it's important to remember that we as a city are at our best when we look out for one another and come together. We saw it after 9-11, and we saw it, we've seen it over the last six months during this pandemic. Sadly, as of yesterday, 23,000 
uh, 758 New Yorkers have died from COVID-19. On behalf of the council, I wanna send our deepest condolences to their families and their loved ones. I also wanna take a moment to acknowledge a few 9-11 related deaths since we last met. Firefighters Christopher Cage and Timothy Burke both recently passed away. And NYPD detective Peter G. Francesco and John Mula, a Con Edison worker, also both unfortunately lost their lives with 9-11 related illnesses. I also want to acknowledge the death of Marcos Rodriguez, one of our city's construction workers. He was 25 years old and he died on September 3rd while working at the Brooklyn Navy Yard construction site. We are sending our condolences to his family and loved ones. The Brooklyn District Attorney's Office also lost the senior district attorney, Sarah Pitts, last week. She was killed riding her bike. Another tragic reminder of why we need to make our streets safer. I want us to take a moment of silence for all the New Yorkers that we've lost to COVID-19. Firefighters Cajun Burke, Detective Gianfrancesco, John Mula, Marcos Rodriguez, and Sarah Pitts. Thank you. Today, I'd like to acknowledge Hispanic Heritage Month, which began on September 15th. This is a great opportunity to acknowledge the contributions of Hispanic leaders in our city who have played such an important role in making New York what it is today. I also want to take a moment to acknowledge the upcoming three-year anniversary of Hurricane Maria, which devastated Puerto Rico. As we continue to battle the impacts of COVID-19 here in New York City, many Puerto Ricans are still recovering from the destruction that occurred during Hurricane Maria and also the impacts of COVID-19 on the island. I wanna to say today that the city council remains united with the people of Puerto Rico today and always. We also have Rosh Hashanah coming up beginning on Friday evening. And on behalf of the council, I wanna say Rosh Hashanah Tova to those who are observing the holiday. I especially again want to thank Rabbi Joseph Potasnik, who gave the invocation earlier for his dedication and work across New York City. And last but not least, I want to acknowledge the departure of uh, someone who, uh, you know, spent a lot of time uh, at the council, who began as an intern for me. I want to Give a special thank you to Henry Robbins for all of his work, everything he's done at the council. I'm personally grateful for the countless hours that you've put in during this time and I'm wishing you the very best on your next journey. Thank you, Henry. And now on to uh, our agenda. We'll be voting to approve the following land use item, 2274 Adam Clayton Powell, which is an urban development action area project and article 11 tax exemption in Councilmember Bill Perkins's district. These actions will facilitate the preservation of four buildings with 60 units of affordable housing. Uh, so I wanna just mention that. We also have a resolution to support schools as they reopen. Resolution number 1410A, sponsored by our education chair, Mark Traeger, calls on the Department of Education to only open school buildings that have met the health and safety standards prescribed on a 50 item checklist. Additionally, the resolution calls on the DOE to implement a mandatory randomized COVID-19 testing program for adults and students in all school buildings. Today, we're also voting on two governmental operation bills. Proposed introduction number 1878A, sponsored by Council Member Keith Powers, uh, will establish a default rule that allows an administering agency to start the rulemaking process and adopt any necessary rules on a local law prior to the law's effective date. The goal is for the rules and the local law to take effect simultaneously. Next is proposed introduction 1874A, sponsored by Councilmember Margaret Chin, which will codify and improve the city's, the city record online's email notification system. 
Currently, the system allows individuals to sign up to receive email notifications whenever a specific agency publishes a notice in the city record regarding an upcoming agency action, such as a public meeting or the adoption of a new rule. Under this bill, individuals who sign up to receive these notifications would be have the option to limit their notifications to items affecting their selected community board district. This will help ensure that individuals only receive items, only receive notifications on items that are relevant to them. And I wanna thank the staff that worked on these, CJ Murray, Emily Forgio, and Elizabeth Kronk. We also have a housing and buildings bill up for a vote. We have, of course, beautiful architecture in our city, but our buildings are aging. The buildings department relies on facade inspections to make sure these buildings are safe these inspections can be costly since scaffolding is erected in many cases. This bill would require the agency to study the feasibility of drones to, con to, to conduct these inspections. Proposed introduction number 1853A, sponsored by our Housing and Buildings Committee Chair, Robert Cornegie, would require the Department of Buildings to conduct a study of safety and feasibility of allowing drones to conduct uh, building facade inspections. And I want to thank Austin Branford for his work on that bill. Uh, next, as many people know, the pandemic has hit our restaurant industry uh, very, very hard. Many beloved eateries and restaurants have closed. Others are barely surviving. Outdoor dining and limited capacity indoor dining are helpful, but not nearly enough. That is why the council is voting on a bill today that allows these restaurants to charge a fee during the pandemic. The goal of the fee is to help these businesses have enough income to cover their costs. Proposed introduction number 823B, sponsored by Councilmember Joe Borelli, uh, would temporarily allow restaurants and other food service establishments to add a COVID recovery charge of up to 10% of a customer's total bill. The menu and bill would need to clearly disclose this charge and the surcharge would be permitted until 90 days after the restaurants may operate at full capacity. From the staff, I wanna thank Balkis Mirig for her work on that bill. I also wanna mention that uh, we know, of course, as I mentioned, restaurants are hurting in the city. And I also think it's important that we focus on helping out low wage workers in these restaurants. All of my colleagues, I believe, uh, share that vision and goal and I'm committed to working on uh, legislation uh, to go to Albany and doing whatever we need to do to make sure that undocumented workers that work at restaurants, backhouse employees that work at restaurants who for far too long have been overlooked, that we make sure that we are looking out for them as well. I have directed the staff at the council to see whatever we can do immediately to introduce a resolution or bill to help ensure that as we are recovering from this and focused on the restaurant and hospitality industry, we are not leaving behind low wage workers, undocumented workers, and workers that are really living under the uncertainty and instability of the restaurant industry. So we are committed to figure out ways to support those workers. And I wanna thank uh, again, all of the colleagues that have really raised that issue during this time to make sure we do not leave anyone behind. Our final bill is long overdue and is a leap forward in efforts to make affordable housing a more equitable system for New Yorkers. People who need affordable housing should not be punished for having a poor, credit, a poor credit score or some debt. This bill forces landlords who get city funding to look beyond credit scores and debt when deciding on tenants. Proposed introduction number 1603A, sponsored by Councilmember Mark Levine, would prohibit a developer from using or considering a tenant or prospective tenant's credit score, consumer debt judgment, collection account, medical debt, or student loan debt, other than delinquent debt that exceeds $12,000 in a rental or lease of an affordable housing unit that receives city funding. Credit scores remain one of the key factors that landlords review during the application process for leasing. An applicant's poor credit score can drastically hinder their ability to attain much needed affordable housing and often has disproportionately negative impacts on communities of color. 
This bill would also prohibit a developer from using the credit history of anyone other than the designated representative of a household. Developers must also disclose the process and criteria by which the consumer credit history of the designated representative will be evaluated. This bill would apply only to projects for which the city financial assistance is expected to have a total value of more of a million dollars or more. And I wanna thank Audrey San for her work on that bill. That is our agenda for today. With that, I turn it back to you, Majority Leader Cumbo. Thank you so much, Speaker Corey Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader, Council Member Borelli. All right, we'll begin with Council Member Borelli. Uh, thank Starting you, Tom. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to uh, commend uh, my colleagues uh, and the staff who helped push this bill to hopefully uh, help save some of the restaurants that make New York City uh, the place we've chosen to live uh, and enjoy uh, and uh, the, the place that tourists seek to come back uh, time and time again to. I opened up uh, today's website for Eater New York, which is probably the only magazine I could ever grace the cover of. Uh, but I'm saddened to see that 31 more restaurants uh, that were popular have already closed. This is an industry that employs 684,000 people statewide. And in this bill, we're temporarily allowing our restaurants to do uh, what just about every other restaurant in every other city around the United States can do, uh, and that's add a surcharge to supplement some of their costs. So uh, I want to thank all the staff, including my own uh, staff member, Frank Masha, who helped uh, work on this legislation for several years, uh, and uh, I would urge all of my colleagues to support it. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any additional uh, colleagues who would like to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader, Council Member Cornegie. Council Member Cornegie, please wait for the clock to begin and you may begin your remarks. Starting time. So I wanted to speak about, thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader. I want to speak about introduction 853, which takes a step forward in a longer process of, of updating our laws to reflect technology we have available today. Drones could play a positive role in building management from facade and roof inspection to energy efficiency analysis. Drones could offer cost-effective opportunities to detect problems early and prevent tragic injuries and deaths. The current 22-year-old and 72-year-old local laws that govern drone use are due for a fresh look by all of us as policymakers. As we pursue the first step studying drone laws and regulations and offering recommendations for changes, intro 1853A recognizes the need to include safety and privacy protections in our analysis. We want to pursue any changes with an awareness of perspective from multiple stakeholders and take their insights and expertise on board. I want to thank my colleagues and I especially want to thank all the experts and advocates who have already begun to share their expertise with us. This legislation and the report of it requires the Department of Buildings to produce will help us bring facade inspection and our broader drone policies up to date. Ultimately, that means more confidence in the safety of our buildings and more safety for everyday New Yorkers. All New Yorkers and the legacies of Grace Gold, Erica Tishman, Zhang Ji, and all those killed or injured due to building facade deserve no less. I want to thank Speaker Corey Johnson. I want to thank the, um, the support staff who helped craft and, and draft this bill. Um, and, and I want, I hope that my uh, colleagues will, will vote yes today. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Cornegie. Are there any other members that wish to speak at this time, Parliamentarian? Madam Majority Leader, there are <clears throat> no other members who have raised their hands. I know some others had indicated they might wanna speak. Are there any other council members who would like to speak now on discussion of general orders? Uh, I'm sorry, Parliamentarian and um, Madam Majority Leader, I just realized that I did that whole presentation without the benefit of my beautiful face. Sorry, everybody who suffers from not being able to see me as I gave that soliloquy. Uh, Council Member Matthew Eugene was supposed to be on the list to speak also about the introduction of legislation. 
Great, that will be during general general discussion. Thank you very much, Council Member Eugene. Well, uh, thank you so on much. You then. I see uh, Council Member Reynoso has now raised his hand, Madam Majority Leader. Council Member Reynoso. Hello. Uh, Starting uh, time. I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sergeant, I'm, I'm good to go. Yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I just want to uh, thank uh, the speaker for his comments that he made in his uh, opening statements. And I honestly do believe that uh, there is interest in this council to support uh, tipped workers and workers in restaurants. Um, and I have a, a statement that I was going to make and an amendment that I was going to introduce. And I, in an effort uh, to build uh, a partnership with my colleagues and the speaker and believing that there truly is a commitment to help the wage workers in our city, I'm going to be pulling that amendment. Um, I will be making a statement uh, at the vote, but wanted to thank Speaker Johnson for, for what, I, what I believe was a, a verbal commitment to, to doing more for wage workers. So thank you. Thanks, Antonio. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, there are no other council members who wish to speak at this time. Uh, thank you so much. And, and I just also want to remind uh, many of our colleagues that during DEM conference, it's also an ideal. Lori, we just lost you. You just went on mute. There you go. No additional like to speak and again reminding members to please bring amendments um, before the Democratic Conference so that we can all review them um, collectively in its entirety um, would make the stated meetings more streamlined. I'd now like to go to report of special committees. None. Reports there are none. Standing, reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, Intro 1603A, Credit Information and in Affordable Housing. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Consumer Affairs and Business Licensing, Intro 823B, COVID-19 Recovery Charges. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Governmental Operations, Intros 1874A and 1878A, the City Record and Administrative Procedure Act. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Housing and Buildings, Intro 1853A, Exterior Wall Examinations. Amended and coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 663 and Reso 1423, 2274, Adam Clayton Powell, UDAP. Coupled on general orders. And at this time, I would ask that the clerk take a roll call vote on all the items that were just mentioned that are coupled on today's general order calendar. Salamanca. I vote aye on all, thank you. Adams. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Thank you so much. Starting Madam time. Leader. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. You know, I struggled with intro A23B quite a bit. Um, it's a well-intentioned piece of legislation, but being a champion of just cause legislation, I'm very concerned that this bill will harm minimum wage earners and de-incentivize tipping that's already at a minimum in a lot of cases. Some of our most vulnerable workers may be irreparably damaged, even if this surcharge is temporary. And for that reason, I vote aye on all except 823B. Thank you. Thank you, council member. I'm Bree Samuel. Good afternoon, everyone. I just wanna give a shout out to Council Member Levin with intro 1603. I really appreciate that bill. And um, with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ayala. Aye on all. Barron. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank Starting you. time. Uh, thank you. 
I want to explain why I'll be voting no on land use 663 and the accompanying resolution 1423. Uh, it's a project which is well intended and will in fact uh, offer the opportunity for people who live at 2274 Adam Clayton Powell Boulevard, the property, the possibility to become apartment owners, co-op or condominium. However, there were no, and the price, the selling price was quite reasonable as all as uh, was stated. But the problem that I have with the bill is that there is no guarantee that those current residents who remain in the building and who do not want to purchase their apartment will have any kind of protection from exorbitant rent increases going forward. If they had all said that they would buy their apartments, then that would be fine. But there has not been that guarantee that they would have protection from rent increases. So based on that, I'm voting aye on all with the exception of LU663 and Rezo 1423. And also, I just want to read and I just wanted to add to the record comments about a friend of mine who is, in fact, the stepmom to our majority leader, Fakisha Combo. I first met Fakisha in 1968 at Brooklyn College. And as you can well imagine, in the 60s, the late 60s, that was a hub of activity for culture, for legislation, for music, and for so many other assertions of what it was that we were doing as Black people. And Fakisha Gumbo was an artist, she was a photographer, she was an author, and she had a program a community program that she conducted on air for probably 30 or 20 years at least. So I just wanted to put into the record, she was pleasant, she was professional, and she was a pioneer. And also she was from Texas, had, had heritage from Texas and always looked forward to the Juneteenth event. So I just wanted to have that in the record. Thank you very much. Thank you for your recognition. Thank you. Borelli. Thank you. Uh, I vote aye on all except uh, intro 1603A and Rezo 1410A. Thank you. Brennan. Aye on all. Cabrera. Aye on all. Chin. I vote I don't know. Cohen. Aye. Billy, you got Morning. me? I vote I'm sorry. You, you got me? I'm sorry, Billy. Oh, it's yes, Andy yes. Cohen. I, was, I was checking. Yes, thank you. I got you. you. Council Member Carnegie. I don't know. Thank you. Deutsch. I don't know. Diaz. I don't know. Drum. I don't know. Eugene. I would I. Gibson. Permission to explain? Permission granted. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Starting uh, time. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, speaker, and all my colleagues. Um, I'm grateful for. Uh, today's agenda, a lot of great and important bills that are really going to make a difference. Um, certainly in this post-COVID world, when we've lost so many New Yorkers, it is a reminder of the challenges that many New Yorkers are faced with. Um, I am going to vote aye on all, with the exception of intro 823. I am still a little uncertain. While I appreciate Councilmember Borelli and all of the intentions of this bill, uh, I agree with the intentions of this bill. I am a little troubled uh, because I recognize that this bill is an important reaction to government's failure. We have not done right in this city by our small businesses, particularly businesses of color, women-owned businesses, and businesses in the outer boroughs. I have been very concerned with the level of support that our businesses have received in the Bronx. Less than 5% of a lot of the grants and loans that were awarded to New York City businesses did not go to the Bronx. So I am very concerned that now this proposed fee 
is going to be put on customers, customers in the Bronx who are already facing a number of challenges. And while it is not a mandate, it is optional, I am very concerned at the unintended in consequences that this bill will have on some of our smaller businesses that really don't have a lot of opportunity. The businesses are doing the very best they can. They have spent a lot of money on outdoor dining and retrofitting their businesses. They have also spent a lot of money on PPE. That is our job. We should be helping them with PPE as many of us have done so. I just feel like we have to do a lot more. I do appreciate the intentions of this bill, but I do worry that the smaller businesses um, are going to have some unintended consequences where customers may not uh, dine in at these locations. So with that, I'm going to abstain on this bill uh, just with the idea and understanding that I will work with this council and with our businesses, particularly those in my district in the Bronx, Time expired. to further help them and support a lot of the needs that they have. So I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 823. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Gibson. Joan I. Majority Leader, permission uh, to explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank Starting you, Starting time. While I agree with many of the comments that were just made by uh, Council Member Gibson, I do want to stress some of the important facts that have not been brought up and continue to be overlooked. Uh, since April, small businesses experienced a loss of over 60% in revenue. 2,800 small businesses have permanently closed between March 1st and July 10th. Great, uh, Partnership for New York predicts 30% of all existing small businesses will not reopen. This is going to change the commercial corridors. This is going to change the shape and the future of New York City. I want to remind everyone that a business that goes out of business has no employees, does not contribute to the city's tax base that provides services and programs to the much needed New Yorkers. It is incumbent upon each and every one of us to do everything that we can to allow these small businesses to reopen and survive. We're not even thinking of thriving we're talking about basic survival. And although this bill is not perfect, it is a solution to a much bigger problem. And that is the lack of leadership in this administration. Our restaurants are at 25% indoor capacity. They cannot survive. This 10% this surcharge, which is optional, for each restaurant to make a decision whether or not they want to apply it how, or what up to what percent they are willing to add as a surcharge will be part of their business model that I'm sure will be adjusted as time moves forward. I implore all of my colleagues to engage themselves more on the dire traits of small business. So although this bill may have some consequences. The greater picture today and the responsibility is that we help to help them survive. So I'll be voting aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Joan I, and thank you for your service to the small business community. Gordon Chick. Uh, thank you. Uh, just some, a brief permission to explain my vote or permission to briefly- Permission granted. Thank you. Starting time. Uh, um, I just want to uh, really uh, thank uh, Chair Traeger uh, and Bulwark for education in the city. Um, the city has a responsibility to over a million young people and their families. And um, I do not believe going forward from this day and, and from the previous months that we've had to prepare uh, for reopening of the schools um, that we are indeed prepared. And as the speaker said, I think that uh, they could have learned a lot from Chair Traeger. And so um, I want to thank him, especially um, for the students of the 35 schools um, that are in my district. And with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Constantinidis. 
Hi, with permission, I'd like to vote on land use call ups and all or, um, uh, items in the general order calendar. Permission oh. granted. I vote Voting aye. time. Thank you, Kevin. Holden. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 1603A, of which I vote no. Kalos. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Please wait for the time clock. Starting time. Thank you to Speaker Corey Johnson for your commitment. And uh, I would like to join Councilmember Reynoso as we strive to do more for our essential workers, including protecting their right to request safety equipment and a safe work environment. And that being said, I, I vote aye on intro 823. I also want to thank Councilmember Carnegie for your leadership and partnership in taking on the scaffolding that continues to plague our city. And I hope that with the passage of introduction 1853, that we can pave the way to fully legalize drone inspections and get the scaffolding down. There's so much great legislation today and I'm proud to vote aye on all. Thank you. King. Congratulations to everyone who's passing smart, good legislation. I think we're gonna make an impact and help the city move itself forward and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Who? Aye on all. Kozlowitz. Aye, I know all. Lantman. Aye. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Please wait for the time clock. Starting time. Thanks very much. I will be voting aye on all except on intro 823B on which I will vote no. Like everyone here, I care so much about our small businesses and our restaurants and I'm pleased to be working with Council Member Powers on a bill for rent relief uh, so that the city can help provide rent relief and support. But like Council Members Adams and Reynoso, I'm really concerned about the workers in those restaurants who are the ones who if they can't pay rent are getting evicted from their homes or are standing themselves in bread lines. Let's remember that in the restaurant industry, it's the one place where workers don't even get the minimum wage as a base. They get a sub minimum wage with tips on top. And I think in some cases they're gonna take home less in tips as council member Adams said, when people see this surcharge on their bill. Uh, that could have been adjusted. This could be available for those businesses that commit either to pay their workers the minimum wage as a base with tips on top, or the surcharge could be required to be shared with workers, in which case I would be open to supporting it. If those are amendments which are made and this is adjusted and made permanent, but with a real commitment that workers get the minimum wage plus tips and the tips and service charges are shared, I'd be glad to vote for future legislation that did that, and I hope we'll do it in the near future. And I'll just add those same workers could be protected from unfair firing by the just cause legislation that council members Adams and Kalos and I have sponsored that's been before this council for quite some time. And meanwhile, the food delivery workers that are gig workers who are delivering food from those restaurants to our homes, we could be extending paid sick leave to them, could have done that in the spring, we could have done that in the summer, we could be doing it today. I really sincerely hope we will be doing it in the future. Um, but since we aren't today, I'll be voting no on E23B and I on the rest. And I wanna join in giving props to Chair Traeger on the way that he has fought for our schools and our teachers and our kids in these recent weeks and thank him on behalf of the over 1 million school kids and all the teachers and school staff who are in those schools starting uh, now. Thanks very much. Thank you, Council Member Lander. Levin. I on all. Levine. Thank you. Permission to briefly explain my vote. Permission granted. Thank Starting you, Madam time. Jordan. Thank you. I would like to briefly speak on intro 1603, which I'm pleased we're voting on today. The mission of affordable housing is to help people who have struggled put a roof over their head. And rules which preclude people who have credit problems from accessing that housing directly undermine that mission. The truth is that people can have credit problems for many different reasons, including medical crisis and other hardships. And in many cases, they can be making an effort to dig out of that hole. They are still being precluded from accessing rental housing, affordable housing, which has city subsidy. And that's simply not fair. Uh, our bill would fix that 
by requ requiring developers who get city subsidy would preclude them from preventing people with credit problems from accessing that housing. That includes all forms of medical debt and student loan debt and any judgments up to $12,000. So this is an important measure to open up affordable housing stock to those who are in need. And uh, I'll be pleased to be voting in favor of this and I on all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Levine for that transformative piece of legislation. Lewis. I don't know. Myself. Yes. Thank you. Menchaka. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Please wait for the time clock to begin. Starting time. Uh, thank you all. And uh, I want to say thank you to all the council members that are uh, passing legislation today. Council member Levine, Traeger, uh, and Borelli, even your, your piece of legislation, I think really speaks to the heart of what we're trying to do to save our business districts in our districts. Um, but I just want to lift up the voice of the many who are behind council member Reynoso's cry for more justice for our workers. Uh, and so I look forward to working with him in his office and anyone else in the council, uh, including the speaker who spoke on that today, uh, to bring them justice. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Menchaca. Miller. Aye. Thank you. Moya. I vote aye on all. Perkins. Aye. Powers. I and all. Thank you. Thank you. Reynoso. Permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. Starting Wait, time. time okay. <laughs> uh, for more, for since the early year, New York City has suffered through one of uh, a once in a generation pandemic. As elected officials, we've been tasked with being creative and swift in addressing the impacts of the coronavirus. For six months, we have been delivering food to needy families. Organizations and electeds alike have been handing out masks and sanitizer and information to residents. Uh, we're looking to reinvent education and have had tough conversations about health, hospitals, and homelessness. We have reinvented our streets to allow for open air gatherings and now uh, even remove the untouchable parking space to help struggling businesses get any advantage they can during this time. Throughout all the work that we have done, we have covered many bases. But there is one glaring absence, workers, specifically tipped workers, folks who are vulnerable, paid below the minimum wage and have struggled with unemployment because of the complexities on how they get paid. Today, we look to pass another bill with the intent to help businesses. I support this bill because it's all hands on deck when we uh, on deck and we must be the problem solvers our constituents want us to be. The amendment that I was going to push would have asked for an hourly wage of $15 an hour for tipped workers. If you're going to opt in, you should be paying your workers at least $15 an hour. And it's something that we can do that is tangible. I'm looking forward to working with this council to see if we can achieve that hereafter. We have to be equitable in the work that we are doing for all of our constituencies, and that must include workers. The council has not passed any legislation directly protecting or assisting workers since the pandemic started. We have bills languishing in committees that can address issues important to tipped workers, but we fast track bills that don't speak to the times and undermine our environment like the fuel cell bill that passed the last stated. I hope that moving forward, we can remember that we must help all New Yorkers and that does include our tipped workers. And I wanna thank you and thank uh, Council, uh, Speaker Corey Johnson. And I'm looking forward to next stated to see some changes, I guess, or some advancement in a lot of these issues. Thank you. Thank um, you, Council. I vote aye on all. Sorry. Thank you. Majority. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Richards. Uh, permission to vote yes on all land use call up items and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Rivera. Council Member Richards. Yes. Oh. Did you vote earlier on land use call up items? No, no, I did not. Okay. Uh, Madam Majority Leader, can we please request unanimous consent for Council Members Constantinides 
and Richards to vote on land use call-up items. At this time, can we uh, provide unanimous consent from the entire city council to allow opportunities for council member uh, Richards and council member- Are you guys still working on- Constantinides. And council member Constantinides to vote on all legislation and land use call-ups. Yes. 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 Any abstentions? No. Any no's? All right. They have it and we can continue with the vote. Council member Rivera. Aye on all. Rodriguez. Aye. Rose. Aye on all. Rosenthal. Aye on all. Thank you. I'm sorry. Traeger. Uh, permission to expand my vote? Permission granted. Starting time. Colleagues, within the New York City school system, 79 DOE employees have died from COVID-19 weighted illnesses as of June 22nd, 2020, including 31 teachers, 28 paraprofessionals, five food service staffers, four central office employees, three school counselors, two administrators, two school aides, two facility staffers, one parent coordinator, and one school computer technology specialist. This number does not include other members of the school community who are not DOE employees, including bus drivers, school safety agents, crossing guards, and others who lost their lives to the coronavirus. And of course, these numbers do not reflect the untold number of students who have lost family members and other loved ones. I mentioned at the previous stated that as a former teacher myself, before I would ask my students to open a notebook in class, I would have to first establish trust in a safe and supportive learning environment in my classroom. What we're hearing today from teachers, education stakeholders, parents, students from across the city, is that that trust has been shattered. And I appreciate the fact that the majority of my council colleagues stand in solidarity with our school communities uh, to prioritize their safety and their wellness because we need a lot more, there's a lot more to do to keep them safe. And this council is passing a resolution that stands in solidarity with them and says, buildings should not open until the city is able to meet every single safety guidance to keep every child, to keep every educator uh, safe and to give families and, and parents a peace of mind as well. And I thank you all for your support, for your leadership. And uh, with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Ulrich. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 1603A. Thank you. Valone. I vote aye on all. Van Bramer. I want to uh, share the concerns that have been echoed by uh, council members Lander, Menchaca, and Reynoso about the workers at our restaurants. And uh, I'll vote yes on all because I want to help our small businesses. Um, but boy, do we have to come back and do something uh, for the workers and the staff at those restaurants. Uh, so I'm I on all, thank you. Thank you. Jaeger. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 1878. Thank you. Matteo. I'm voting no one 1603A and I and the rest. Thank you. Combo. I vote aye on all.
Speaker Johnson. Chairman Ayano. Council Member Barron, we see your hand is raised before we close the vote. Yes, I wanted to make general discussion comments. Is that now I had stepped away? Uh, it'll be later. We'll add you to the list. Okay. Thanks, Council Member Barron. The vote on today's general order calendar is all items have a vote of 49 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exceptions of the following. Introduction 823B has 46 in the affirmative, two in the negative, one abstention. Land use item 663 in resolution 1423 has 48 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 1603A has 45 in the affirmative, Four in the negative, zero abstentions. Introduction 1878A has 49 in the affirmative, excuse me, 48 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions, and revised land use call ups are now at 49 in the affirmative. Thank you. The items on today's general orders calendar are now adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills <clears throat> are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. Thank you. We will now move into the discussion of resolutions. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Thank Council you. We will go ahead, Parliamentarian. Councilmember Menchaca, do you wish to speak about the resolution? No. We will add you to general discussion. Thank you. Thank you. We will now have a voice vote on today's resolution. If you wish to vote against or abstain from today's resolution, please notify the Legislative Documents Unit by email. Let me read today's resolution into the record. Resolution 1410A calls on the Department of Education to only open school buildings that have met the health and safety standards prescribed in the UFT 50 item checklist and implement a medically recommended mandatory randomized COVID-19 testing program for adults and students in all school buildings as agreed upon by the administration and the labor organizations representing school personnel, including UFT, CSA, and DC 37. Will all those in favor say aye? Aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Any abstentions? The ayes have it. We will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you make your remarks. I will wait for the parliamentarian at this time <coughs> to inform me who is on the list to speak. Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council members Rivera, Moya, and Eugene. All right. I'd like to uh, first begin by uh, wishing Councilmember Carlos Menchaca a happy birthday, and we will begin effectively with Councilmember Rivera. Time starts now. 
Thank you. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak briefly on my bill, intro 20A3, which will extend the suspension period for the enforcement of personal liability provisions in commercial leases affected by COVID-19 until March 2021. My original bill suspending personal liability provisions is set to expire on September 30th, and it is critical that we pass an extension as quickly as possible. It's clear that we all underestimated how long this crisis would last and its impact on small business owners, but I hope you will recognize the continued urgency of this moment. Extending this law is one of the few tangible actions this body can take to save small businesses from permanently shuttering and their owners from financial ruin. It is simply unethical to let this expire and allow landlords to go after people who have already lost their income and livelihoods in the midst of an ongoing economic and public health crisis. I'm kept up at night thinking about the countless small business owners who have reached out to my office terrified that they'll now lose any semblance of financial independence after they've already lost their income and livelihoods due to COVID. Earlier this week at the hearing for this pre-considered bill, we heard from Louise Favier, the owner of Two Brooklyn Bars, the pencil factory in Onderdunk and Sons. She currently owes her landlords $100,000 in back rent from the start of the pandemic. And without these protections, her only option will be to operate her bars at a loss and be saddled with debts for the next 30 years to pay back her rent. That means she will be paying until she's 86 years old. Even with outdoor dining and limited indoor dining on the horizon, the reality is that very few of them will be able to break even for the foreseeable future. When my bill previously passed with an overwhelming majority, I challenged any of my colleagues who expressed their hesitancy about my original bill to listen to the small business owners like Louise, who are asking specifically for this help. Because if we want our city to truly recover, Fine. to ensure that this is a city where small businesses can not only survive, but eventually thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rivera, for that very smart uh, introduction. Next, we will have Councilmember Moya, followed by Councilmember Eugene. Councilmember Moya, please wait for the time clock to begin. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, Speaker and my colleagues. I'm here to speak about my uh, bill intro uh, 2081. Uh, right now, the city is facing an economic crisis that is affecting uh, every aspect of our lives from the macro to the micro. Uh, the macro problems, unemployment in double digits, restaurants unsure if they will uh, ever fully open up again, and the list goes on. Uh, this deeply impacts the micro. Uh, can a family put food on the table and keep a roof over their heads uh, for another month? Uh, that is why today I'm introducing legislation to reform the application process for the one-shot deal program that provides critical relief and support uh, to families facing evictions. This legislation would create an addi additional opportunities to apply for rental assistance via the one-shot deal during the COVID-19 pandemic, increase public awareness of the program, and improve the program's transparency. The one-shot deal program is run by HRA and is an emergency assistance program that helps people facing unexpected hardship uh, to cover an expense. Currently, the, uh, those seeking a grant to address rent must travel to housing court. And as a result, housing court being closed to the public for much of the last six months, the program numbers have plummeted. This legislation would apply specifically to rental arrears, ensuring that New Yorkers who are struggling to pay the rent have an additional option to cover the cost and stay in their homes. The legislation also calls for enhanced opportunities to be offered to seniors, individuals with disabilities, and those that lack access to technology. Uh, our housing crisis has become exceptionally worse since the beginning of the pandemic and the red tape has prevented those in dire circumstances from accessing resources that they need, including the one shot deal program. I'm proud to introduce this legislation uh, to make this program more transparent and accessible, especially during the current crisis. And I encourage my colleagues to sign on as co-sponsors and I look forward to working uh, to pass uh, this bill as soon as possible. And I'd also like to thank uh, Nicole Bramstedt and Mayne Taddeo um, for uh, their work uh, on this uh, legislation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your focus, Council Member Moya. We will now have Council Member Eugene. <coughs> Council Member Eugene, please wait for the time clock to begin. Time starts now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. My colleagues, we all know the devastation impact, the devastating impact that COVID-19 has had on our city, our state, our country, and also in the global community. Today, I'm introducing 
several pieces of legislation that will implement more effective protection for the members of the immigrant community who are in danger of losing their lawful status and being deported as a result of COVID-19 pandemic. I'm also introducing legislation that will improve the remote, the remote learning experience for all New York City's children and better facilitate the conversion of a building code into hospital in the event of a pandemic. Resolution 1416 call on the United States Department of Homeland Security to hold all deportation proceeding for length of the COVID-19 pandemic as a means of restricting the global spread of this uh, deadly disease. Resolution 1417 call on the Department of Homeland Security to place a moratorium in all removal proceeding and for employment based status orders that suffer a loss of employment due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the resolution 81418 calls on the Congress to pass and president to sign legislation that will permit employment based status holders to retain lawful status if their loss of employment was related to COVID-19. In addition, intro 2075 will provide a mobile hot, hot uh, spot to all New York City students, regardless of socioeconomic status, to ensure quality and education and that no students are left behind during the remote learning experience. And finally, introduction 2076 will require the commissioner of building to Time. recommend update to the construction of code to better facilitate the conversion into a temporary hospital in the event of a pandemic of health emergency uh, crisis. And I'm asking all my colleagues to support those very important legislation. Thank you so very much. Thank you so much, Council Member Eugene. Are there any other members that wish to speak at this time, Parliamentarian? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Council Members Barron and Menchaca. Council Member Barron, please wait for the time clock to begin before you begin your remarks. Time starts now. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Just briefly, two points. I want to call my colleague's attention to the New York Times article that appeared, the editorial that appeared on September the 14th, entitled New York City Council, Don't Roll Back Police Reforms. And the article talks about the fact that after six years, we were finally able to get a chokehold ban bill into law, passed into law, and that we now have this serving as a model across the country. And it lists several reasons why we should not adopt the amendment that has been proposed. So I do have a, an email that I'm sending out to all my colleagues to facilitate your being able to see that editorial if you missed it on Monday. And secondly, I just want to say that uh, there are several of us in our community who are opposing the mayor's actions uh, that led, first of all, to the homeless men being moved out of the Lucerne Hotel based on the uh, opposition and complaints of the white wealthy Upper West Side for having that population there and now creating an avalanche of other disruptions throughout the shelter system. In my district, there is the Flatlands Family Residence, which houses about 90 families, women with children, women and husbands and their husbands with children, two, three children, I've seen them myself. We are opposed to the mayor's proposition that this family shelter be closed as a, as a ripple effect from what he did in closing the men's shelter at the Lucerne. This is a finally a place where people who are in limbo, people who are waiting for their permanent housing to be able to know that at least it's someplace um. they can go where their children can get after school services and they can get support services. So we did have a demonstration yesterday and we are opposed to any impact of other shelters based on what the mayor did on the Upper West Side, West 79th Street. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. Uh, we'll now have Car Council Member Carlos Menchaca. Please wait for the time clock to begin. Time starts now. 
Thank you, Majority Leader, for the birthday wishes. And I can't wait to share a hug with you very soon. Um, yesterday was a historic day for the City Council. The Subcommittee on Zoning and Franchises held a critical 11 and a half hour hearing on Industry City's rezoning application. Yesterday was a testament to language access. Constituents were given uh, the ability to hear the hearing in Spanish, Mandarin, Cantonese, and Arabic, first time ever. More than 200 people signed up to testify on the in Industry City rezoning. Many more listened and many more sent their testimony in their own language. And I want to say gracias. Gracias to the incredible leadership of Speaker Johnson, his entire team, uh, Jason, Raju, Genevieve, all of you, uh, and Chair Moya and Chair Salamanca, who really committed to this and made it something incredibly special. We felt it on the ground. Here's some key points that I found very telling in this hearing. One, there is no accountability. Congress member Nidia Velasca said it best. Show me a time when a developer has made and kept their promise. It has never happened. The community knows this and all the elected officials in the districts representing the district know it too. Second, the mayor has been absent this entire time and will not play a critical role in ensuring that we mitigate the impacts to this massive application. Three, this is not Amazon. This is a real estate developer that gives leases, not jobs. Amazon can promise jobs, Industry City can't. In fact, they talked about the 20,000 jobs as not really being that and being more of a gimmick at best. The developer admitted that they only really are uh, talking about 7,000 new jobs when they've already created 8,000 out of the 20. And then there's another 5,000 that will be offsite and part of the economic ripple of impact but no guarantees about when those jobs would come. So colleagues, let's keep talking. Uh, I know that this engagement time. is hard, but the lines are open. Thank you so much for this time. Thank you so much, Council Member Carlos Menchaca. Are there any additional members who wish to speak at this time, Parliamentarian? No, Madam Majority Leader. I will now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's uh, statement. Member Levin, I see, is waving his hand. Okay. Council Member Levin, would you like to make uh, remarks at this time? Yes, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you. Um, uh, I just wanted to follow up I'm on... Now. Thank you so okay. much, uh, Parliamentarian. I, I want to uh, follow up on the remarks of Council Member Barron. Um, <clears throat> yesterday, we heard um, in the General Welfare Committee um, Intro 146, which uh, uh, has a supermajority of sponsors. Um, and uh, got that supermajority prior to COVID. And so now we're, we're, we're taking up this legislation um, in earnest. And this is a bill that would raise the uh, value of a city FEPS voucher, which is the city's um, version of a rental assistance voucher to the fair market rent. As it is right now, um, there is no neighborhood in New York City that, uh, that the voucher, the voucher amount uh, can actually meet a fair market rent. And so um, as a result, uh, uh, DHS clients will have a city FEPS voucher uh, for one, two, or three years and will be unable to find an apartment. And so the, in order to really move families and individuals out of shelter and into permanent housing, we need to give them a fighting chance and having a voucher that is actually worth something um, is integral to that effort. Um, as our former speaker, Chris Quinn, actually said yesterday in her testimony, what we're doing is actually worse than not giving families anything. And she's now the, the CEO of, of WIN, uh, formerly Women in Need, a shelter provider, um, uh, mostly in Brooklyn, that when we provide a undervalued voucher, it's actually worse than not giving clients anything because it's giving them false hope, uh, giving them a voucher that, uh, that, is, that is basically useless. And, and frankly, the Department of Homeless Services yesterday was not able to give us any data on uh, its effectiveness um, uh, up to this um, point. So I encourage uh, my colleagues to, if you haven't signed on already, intro 146, we hope to get as much support as possible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member Levin. I'll now call on Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. I believe we have one final speaker. Um, so my apologies. 
we can turn it over to, uh, if you could recognize Council Member Mark Jonai. Council Member Jonai. Time starts thank now. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you, uh, Majority Leader. Uh, I just want to echo uh, Council Member Levine and Council Member Barron. Council Member Barron currently has a bill in, it's, a, it's called a tree bill, which protects uh, households earning under $50,000, similar to the SCREE program and the DREE program, that those tenants and those families would not be subject to any future rent increases, giving them the opportunity and the ability to stay afloat and keep a guaranteed roof over their heads as they don't see their expenses increase. Um, I am encouraged by Councilwoman Barron's bill. I introduced that bill when I was in the State Assembly, and I would love to see more attention focused on that that would bring uh, relief to many of our struggling tenants and a permanent solution to the future uh, struggles that our residents will have. Thank you. Council Member Jonai, thank you so much for your remarks. Are there any other council members that wish to speak before we close out today's meeting? No, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you, and I just wanna remind uh, all members, uh, we've restructured the Democratic Conference in many ways to encourage more debate and discussion on critical pieces of legislation. I encourage all members to participate with their delegations so that uh, the nuances and the challenges uh, and the pros of the different bills are discussed in greater length. And I'll now turn it over to Speaker Corey Johnson to close today's stated meeting. Uh, thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I want to echo um, the comments that uh, Councilmember Menchaca made in thanking the staff that worked really hard yesterday on the hearing, Raju Mann and his team, as well as <clears throat> Jason Goldman and Genevieve Michaels. Everyone worked really hard on the language access issue to make sure that whether it was Arabic or Mandarin or Spanish or Cantonese, whatever the language was, people were able to testify and get translation uh, for the language. And I think it's the first time the council's ever done that. So uh, I know that Councilman Menchaca was uh, pushing for that uh, to make sure that his constituents and other constituents would have the opportunity to participate in a full and meaningful way. And uh, you know, I'm really proud that we were able to do something along those lines to have the council be more participatory for uh, all residents, people where English is not their first language, where they may not speak English at all, uh, but they're a New Yorker and they wanna be able to participate in government. So I wanna thank the staff that really made that possible. I really wanna thank uh, Chair Moya, who chaired, I believe, an almost 12 hour hearing yesterday uh, and did it with uh, good humor and respect for everyone that was testifying. Of course, uh, people have a really um, passionate feelings around this and he allowed there to be space for people to share those feelings freely and openly and stayed until the very last person was able to uh, give their testimony, which I think was very late into the night last night, uh, past, I think uh, it was almost close to midnight, I think, when, uh, when things wrapped up. So I wanna just uh, thank him for that, thank the staff. Uh, thank you, Francisco, you did a great job yesterday. We're grateful to your leadership. And he spent a lot of time preparing for yesterday's hearing. It wasn't just that he showed up and did it. He spent weeks actually working with Councilman Menchaca and the land use staff to make sure that the hearing would go off in a thoughtful and appropriate way. And I really appreciate his leadership, the leadership that he showed yesterday. Uh, with that, the stated meeting of September 16th, 2020 is hereby adjourned.